it's a Saturday morning and been a hard couple weeks for me. I once again injured uh, my arm and my shoulder, this time doing the PEX plumbing. Elciana's uh, finishing it up for me and you'll see as um, I show her doing it that for anyone that might have uh, inflammatory issues, this uh, crimping really uh, flares it up. PEX plumbing in comparison with copper is uh, a lot easier to use. Uh, it's more foolproof. It reminds me of uh, Tinker Toys in that you're sticking pieces together. Um, we, we did trunk and branch uh, plumbing, uh, which is traditional if you were doing PVC or copper. Um, with PEX, you could use a manifold but all of our plumbing is so close together and we we're trying to save money so it was uh, cheaper and easier to run trunk and branch. What we're doing today is uh, plumbing in the outdoor faucets and that will be the, the last of the rough plumbing for the Yes. One elbow to bring the pipe up like the other pipes, to bring it up um, vertical. So you want it up? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, but you need to, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, you need to crimp the pipe you're bringing into it first. Is it the white one? Mm-hmm. So Elsian is pushing a elbow into a piece of half inch uh, PEX pipe and she's going to crimp it. The hardest part with this is using the tool. The tool's heavy and unwieldy and you have to have those crimps at an eighth to a quarter from the end of the pipe and invariably the tool will move the copper circle like it just did right there and it's a constant fight and then if you have strength issues with your hands or arms that's a little too far down mm. yeah right there would be great And now it's too high. <laughs> so gravity won't be fine. Mm -hmm. It's always easier to crimp these things if you do um, the free pipe first and by that I mean the pipe that isn't coming up out of the floor or in the studs that way you have pretty much free range and motion Still. on the tool but when you're working in tight places the tool is really difficult to work with There, she's got it. And when you hear that,
click of a tool handle hitting the other side, that's when it's crimped. Let me look at it and make sure it's not... Not crooked and that the elbow's still placed well. Did you get a crimp on that pipe first? No. Yeah, you always have to remember <laughs> to uh, put the crimp on the pipe before the fitting goes in. But the fittings aren't hard to take in and out. They're easy to deal with. They just push in and you have to make sure they're seated well. So it's either be like in the center or more of it this way. It doesn't matter at this point, you're just getting it crimped. And this is where it gets tricky when you're trying to work with a pipe that's already in the floor. There's not too many studs around here. So it's not all that bad. And in fact, uh, the joist recider will end up coming in handy because you can use it as leverage when you're closing the tool. If you so choose, she's strong enough. She can crimp it without the help. But usually I had to put one end of the tool on a stud or joist and then lean into the tool with my other hand on my body weight. <coughs> so I ended up with a swollen arm and hand and basically lost all my feeling in, in that hand. It's been two weeks since I did that. And Brian and Elsie have been doing most of the plumbing since then. There was the click. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we need another elbow. No, we need an elbow. No, it's going across to the blue line. It's got to get, that blue line is going to be the outdoor water faucets supply line. It's the getting... The sink and the outdoor thing? The blue will go to the sink. And the white to blue that you're working on right now is going to the outdoor faucet. I'm going to show you the different things we've used. There's lots of videos uh, around about PEC, so I won't go through each of the different fittings. But what is easy, I thought, when going to the store is that they color code the bags. All the half inch fittings are pink, and all the three quarter fittings are blue, and the one inch ones are yellow. And even if you're using a reducing fitting, it will take the higher measurement. So this is a reducing T, and it's blue because it's a higher measurement. It's three quarter. Um, we have a couple kinds of uh, supports like this that will take your pipe and bend it to a 90 degree angle and hold it there. PEX is flexible, but the three quarter inch is pretty difficult to bend. And so um, it took bracing pipe against a stud and then full body weight and then two of us to pop one of these in to these steel elbows. But um, using these uh, means that you didn't have to use uh, elbow fittings 
change the direction of your pipe and the fewer fittings you use the fewer chance for leaks so my original intention had been to use quite a few of these but um, since I work by myself quite a bit I just did not have the strength to do these bins so I switched to using more fittings now the half inch pipe is much easier to bend and um, if it hadn't been that I already had the half inch fittings, I would have uh, purchased half inch elbows and used those instead, but you use what you have. <laughs> so, um, and this is a PEX pipe cutter. It was not pricey. I think it was less than $10. And it's just a sharp blade and a curved seat for the hose. Um, this hose is fairly easy to cut. The hard part for me was getting a straight edge on the three-quarter pipe because you want uh, straight edges on the end of these so they meet up with the fitting really well. And here's, uh, this is a good example of a, a straight edge and you would get a good connection with the fitting there, but with the three-quarter pipes, I kept getting angles probably more related to the strength in my hands um, but when you do cut a pipe you need to think of this being like the vertical of a letter T and then when you go across it think of crossing your T at perfectly straight so that you're making these 90 degree angles and that helps getting a clean cut 